President Bola Tinumbu presented a budget estimate of 27.50 trillion for the 2024 fiscal year based on a crude oil benchmark price of, uh, of $77.96 per barrel, daily oil production of 1.78 million barrels per day, and an exchange rate of 750 naira to the US dollar. The budget deficit is projected at 9.18 trillion. We have Cute. adopted a conservative oil price benchmark of 77.96 US dollar per barrel and daily oil production estimate of 1.78 million barrels per day. We have also adopted a Naira to US dollar exchange rate of 750 per US dollar for 2024. Accordingly, an aggregate expenditure of 27.5 trillion Naira is proposed for the federal government in 2024, of which the non-debt recurrent expenditure is 9.92 trillion Naira, while debt service is projected downward to be 8.25 trillion Naira, and capital expenditure is 8.7 trillion Naira. Nigeria remains committed to meeting its debt obligations. Projected debt service is 45% of the expected total revenue. The budget deficit is projected at 9.18 trillion Naira in 2024, or 3.88% of GDP. This is lower than the 13.7 trillion Naira deficit recorded in year 2023, which represents 6.11% of GDP. <laughs> the deficit will be financed by new borrowings, totaling 7.83 trillion Naira. Strategically, 2.98 billion Naira from privatization proceeds and 1.05 trillion naira drawdown on multilateral and bilateral loans secure for specific project. The president announced the 2024 budget of renewed O aims to tackle critical issues, boost the economy and resolve security concerns in the upcoming fiscal year. The 2024 appropriation has been themed budget of renewed hope. <laughs> the proposed budget seeks to achieve job rich economic growth, macroeconomic stability, a better investment environment, enhanced human capital development as well as poverty reduction and greater access to social security. Defense and internal security are recorded top priority. The internal security architecture will be overhauled to enhance law enforcement capabilities and safeguard lives, property, and investment across the country. Human capital is the most critical resource of national development. Accordingly, the budget prioritizes human development with particular attention to children, the foundation of our nation. <laughs> to improve the effectiveness of our budget performance, government will focus on ensuring value for money greater transparency and accountability. In this regard, we will work with more closely with development partners and the private sector. 
to address long-standing issues in education, a more sustainable model of funding tertiary education will be implemented, including the student loan scheme planned to become operational by January 2024. The senior president, Gosula Kwabio, praised President Inumbu's development plans, stating that Nigeria has never had such ambitious plans since its founding. Since, if, since its founding fathers. We need to acknowledge the specific achievements of President Bolamet Tinubu's administration so far. Those who doubted him initially forgot his track record as the governor of Lagos State from 1999 to the year 2007. And Lagos, of course, is the Nigeria's melting pot. Nigerians strongly believe that with a dead profile of the day today, that you are the man for the job to fix our economy. Already we have seen significant economic reforms, starting with the courageous removal of the petroleum subsidy, which has become an albatross to our nation. We have taken the right steps to unify the multiple foreign exchange markets. In view of this and the related challenge of high level of public debt, the National Assembly will ensure that the 2024 budget includes concrete strategies for sustainable debt management, including measures to increase revenue and control expenditure. Specifically, the focus should be on raising more revenue through tax reform, fiscal reform, subsidy reform, foreign exchange convergence, and centralized revenue collection. In our recent engagement with MDAs on the MTEF, we emphasize the need for revenue generating agencies to double their targets to meet the 18 trillion revenue projected in the budget. Mr. President, the effectiveness and legitimacy of fiscal policies depend to a very large extent on public support as the People's House and in line with our legislative agenda the House of Representatives will convey the first national citizens' budget town hall to harness public input and opinion on this budget. <laughs> we are convinced that this will increase transparency and accountability, improve policy making, and increase trust in government. Public participation in the budgetary process has been shown to improve resource allocation and service delivery, as well as a more stable and robust economy. Joining us to look at this budget presentation, tagged renewed hope by President Bola Tinumbu, his immediate past chairman, Icon Lagos, and District Society, Alester Wilkos, and an economist, Shegun Supiton. Gentlemen, good to have you on Plus Politics. Alistair. Thanks, man. It's always my pleasure. Thank you, Bola. It's nice to see you again. Uh, pleasure is all mine. Uh, what is, to start with, what is your synoptic take of the uh, overall budget as presented by the president today? Uh, first, I was taken aback at the size of the budget. Uh, the size of the budget is rather very, very wide. We, we, we have moved from 22 trillion of the last the last budget to 27 trillion, which is a very very large size budget, and um, I'm not convinced. With not I, I I stand to be corrected. I'm not convinced that whatever that is being proposed uh, cannot be contained in a very in 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 fact in, in a more compacted budget. Uh, we have we have not left this incremental budgeting strategy that we have always implemented uh, and our, our approach to budgeting and go to what 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 we had earlier proposed zero based budgeting we've not and so every year what you have is an incremental based budgeting where some of the previous year is just hijacked up and then a beautiful speech being read uh down the line we might not be able to see 
those speeches being, uh, I mean, being materialized because the man making the speech is the president. The implementers of the of the budget are various men and women scattered all over agencies, MDAs, ministries, and all other uh, gamut of uh, of um, of uh, 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 administrative architecture within the country. So that leaves a lot of gap. But I like what the House Speaker said, talking about Tajuddin Abbas, talking about going to hold a stakeholder summit on the budget. I think that 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 might help to put some uh, impetus to how the budget is being implemented. Because really, we have very beautiful speeches, uh, very beautiful uh, 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 analogies and set out objectives. But the president is not the sole implementer. The president is the president. He does his own job. There are several gamut of implementers of the budget. And I wonder if those, were, if those people have those beautiful speeches embedded in their minds, in their souls, and in their heads. So that as they move forward, they'll be remembering what the president said and implement as such to achieve the desired objective. I doubt if that's going to be the case. Okay, uh, let's chase the two rabbits that you have just released with your, with your opening salvo. One, uh, the disparity between the 22 trillion that was last, uh, that was uh, the last budget to 27 now, a gap of about five trillion, which you believe uh, I could ordinarily be saying to you that that may be. Uh, adjusted to inflation and devaluation of the Naira relative to the value of the Naira at the last time the 22 trillion budget was made. Uh, that's number one. Number two is the frustration or the, the slight um, frustration that is inherent in your remark that is one thing for the budget to have been read uh, in a very um, romantic environment such as the president had this morning, but that ultimately the implementers that are, are the bureaucrats and uh, they seldom, you know, uh, pull the same uh, strike in their in their um, in their work as the person who has read the budget. Um, but it is incumbent on political leadership too to find a mechanism for the reform of the civil service of the bureaucracy because you know they may have the best of visions but if the bureaucracy is not quite uh, not quite uh, well resourced to implement it we will be expressing the kind of frustration that you have reasonably and politely and discreetly expressed. How would you respond to the to those two two uh, two responses to your earlier points? Yeah, well, I thank you very much. The, to the first point, um, first and foremost, our budgets are always our cost of uh, services is always over bloated and too uh, large uh, in terms of uh, already embedded with a lot of corruption. So where you discover that in government circle, you tie a Nigeria is a country where you tie a kilometer of road with over a, almost a billion naira to so tie a kilometer of road, which in the world standard in most in most in most part of the world is it, it ranges between two fifty million to three hundred million to so tie a kilometer of road less than five hundred million. We've seen budget of other countries when you compare them to our own currency. So you discover that we are already you know when you have budget padding. We already have that embedded in our budgetary system. And because these budgets are prepared by the, by the bureaucrat we are talking about, so they've already factored their interest. So even at the 22 trillion, you discover that uh, it's an over bloated budget, it's an over padded budget. Because when you see what they spent, the cost of implementing, I mean, for instance, we all, sh we all shouted, hit you and cry about the legislators buying a car for 164 million. But like you and I we want to buy that car. If we choose to buy that car, I'm sure we cannot buy for, for more than 80 to 90 million. But in government circle, it is clear that the price is doubled. No matter what you are putting into those cars, this is bought, you cannot be more than 70 to 80 million, at best 200 million. But it is clear in government circle, it is of course two times. So we already have that corrupt element, inflation element embedded in our budget. And that is why 
I'm talking about going back to the basis. And I wish the president, with the courage he had in carrying out some bold uh, reforms, some bold policies when he took over, uh, over offices to reform the country, he will take a bold step in this direction. Maybe, let me excuse him, maybe between June and, uh, and December, and now it's too short a time to say let's start from the scratch. But going forward for 2004 and 24 budget, when you, you will have the luxury of time and the, and the whole year, then you must implement such a drastic uh, departure from our budgeting system to a realistic budget. Now, if you look at the budget, debt servicing is going to take about, uh, 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 debt, de de a new debt will take about, about 7 trillion. While debt service is going to take about 8 trillion. At uh, net, well, you say we, we, you can say we are doing about well. Nine, net, about nine trillion. Debt servicing about nine so trillion. We can say we, we can say that we are doing some savings between new debt and servicing of the old debt. But the fact now remains that will you always want to want to have debt in a corruption embedded budget? So that's why I said we must go back to the basis if we want to reform this country and reform the bureaucracy and reform service delivery. To the to to the to the to the to the, to, to, to the uh, amusement of the entire citizenry, then we must go back to the basis and do what is right. Now talking about talking about the bureaucracy, of course we've seen them. The budget of Mr. President today is nothing of a, different to the budget of other presidents. You see here the same thing: human capital development taking priority, talking about security taking priority. But the difference I had now was talking about internal security. To overhaul the internal security system for a better protection. I agree to that. There is the need for that. I'm not saying there is no need to invest a lot of money in a lot of sectors, critical sectors. For instance, education, uh, securities, uh, security, and infrastructure. Talking about works and infrastructure. We'll get to that. Yeah, we'll, to we'll get to that, Ale Alistair. We'll get to that, Alistair. Uh, your colleague, Shagun is, uh is with us. Uh, Shagun Shokuton. Uh, what's your initial take? Your initial salvo of the totality? Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, what's your initial take of uh, the totality of what was read this morning? Well, I mean, it's not no longer news um, that we have this uh, uh, what a particular budget um, and. Uh, mm -hmm. Ah, the connection is a bit uh, uh, we may uh, let the uh, Shagun the technical team uh, hello uh, I'm sorry can you hear me now we can now we can okay Now we can Let me try again. Okay, uh, Alistair, le, le, Alistair le, let me come back to you whilst our uh, uh, technical team is sorting uh, Shegun's connection. Alistair, I, I am hearing a silent, discreet voice of frustration from a savvy business analyst uh, whose uh, primary occupation also speaks to figures. Um, I, I, I seem to be, from, from your earlier remarks, uh, without, being, without being too asabic, without being too antagonistic, or without being too, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, there is a subtle underlay of frustration that I'm hearing in your voice, especially around the bureaucracy. Uh, your trust in the implementers of the budget. The, the vision may be good. The vision may be great. But here I'm listening to a seasoned professional. Uh, is that you, you respect the general, but the 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 foot soldiers, uh, you don't see discipline, you don't see uh, fortress. Uh, am, I being, am I being too judgmental of your opinion? Please help me. Well, well you are not. You are not. Uh, every, 
every sound mind and uh, uh, every lover of this country like I do, I love this country with passion, with all my heart, with all my soul. And I feel so concerned about happenings in the country. And you, you, should, you know my credentials. I have always been a supporter of government ever since. As I speak for government, even though I've never been anywhere near part of those who run, who call the Shin government, I've always been supportive and remain supportive and will always remain supportive of government because that is the only country I have and I'm so proud to be a Nigerian. So I love this country. And um, yes, you are, not, you, are not, you are not wrong in saying my frustration because my frustration has always been the fact that we've had beautiful budgets. Today we're discussing the federal government budget. I hope you call me back. Let's discuss some of the state budgets because it looks like everybody will always consider the federal government budget, which may not, may, may not affect us so much like our state University body will affect But let me take since now now we're discussing federal government budget. You see, for every budgetary circle, we have people that are ready to slice the to slice the cake and put in their pockets. That is why you see budgets for roads, they will not be done. You see budgets for uh, 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 infrastructures, they will not be built. At the end of the day, you will hear that uh, recurrent expenditure, which is the consumption part of the budget, is implemented 100 percent sometimes you look for additional you go for a, a, a supplementary budget but the capital budget that should affect the generality of the people is not is maybe sometimes you have as low as 40 percent implementation for me that shows that the, the the implementers of the budget or the 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 entire gamut of uh, uh, governance is not in in tandem with the speeches of the president with the, uh, the, uh, uh, the beautiful romantic speeches of the president in playing the budget, the entire gamut of the implementers and the administration is not in, in tandem. If not, you'll not be hearing the hue and cry. But like if our budgets that we have made over the years, let's say since democratic dispersion came into being, Nigeria should have been competing with Malaysia, with Singapore in terms of development. But no, at the end of the day, you hear grass corruption, grass corruption, grass corruption everywhere. Is it part of the budget? The answer is no. But because the implementers have a different ideology, a different idea altogether. You see clear case of waste. You see clear case of waste and profig uh, profigacy to the, to the, to, 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 to every, I mean, damn the consequences. After all, uh, EFCC will, will investigate. ICPs will investigate. Nothing will happen. And that's what we find ourselves in. And that's, that is my pain, Bola. That is not because I'm against anybody in government or against the president or against the speech. I love the president. I love this country. I love this country with all my heart and with all my blood. But sincerely, we can do far better with even the little we have. Now we're targeting 18 trillion revenue. As far as I'm concerned, that's a child's play. 18 trillion in our economy is a child's play. We, we can do far better than that. If you, if, if you deflate our budget now into, into put it into dollar, that's about $27 billion. So it's a child's play concern what South Africa is doing. I mean, that could be the, the, that could be the budget of, that, that is less than the budget of California or budget of some states in the, in, 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 in the U.S. But even with our own environment, with what we are expecting, if, they are, if every, if there is, account, the president is talking about involving international partners for accountability, they've all been involved. International partners, we have all the, all the, all the laws the, the Public Procurement Act is a big enabling uh, uh, anti-corruption uh, 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 piece of legislation that should okay. guide our, uh, that should guide our let me go to Let me go to your colleague, Sheik Mushopiton, who is now uh, on phone, uh, I guess his uh, internet connection uh, is not allowing us the grace uh, and the beauty of seeing his lovely face uh, audiovisually, but at least we have the audio. Make yourself no no over chop him. So we read that we we do. Shagun, good to have you. Uh, you want to give us your summary take of uh, the major major uh, issues addressed in the budget today by Mr. President. Hello, Shagun. Hello, Shagun Shakuton. 
Good evening, Mr. Agolaba. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your for your tenacity and persistence. Uh, yes, some other persons would have been frustrated. I really want to appreciate you for this. Uh, kindly give thank us you. your the summary of your of your take of uh, the issues in the budget as raised by the president today. Well, I mean, the, I think the key issue for me is the fact that this is more of the same. You know, it's that um, it's it's the same budget cycle that we've, we've seen the country go through over the last, God knows, two decades or so. Um, so it looks almost like a copy and paste budget. I, I don't see anything um, that will inspire the confidence that the things that the pro president says he wants to achieve, that he will achieve them. You know, the budget is a policy document. And you begin to look at the budget if you want to uh, determine the direction that the government is likely to go in. So if we still want to become a $1 trillion economy in, you know, uh, seven, eight years, then there are certain things that we need to do from today that will set us on that path. And that, this budget has not shown um, anything particularly significant that that suggests that we, we, we will head in that direction. So we still have the normal deficits, a significant huge deficit. We still have revenue shortfalls. We still have um, capital expenditure that is grossly inadequate. Okay, Shagun, to... uh, when an expert like you is talking and you are loading those points uh, one on the other, we may be doing a lot of the service to uh, to people who may not be as uh, knowledgeable in the arcane theories of economics as you are. L let me focus on some of the things you have actually stated now and what may be the implication, uh, positively or negatively, on, uh, on the awesomeness of the economy. You yes. are a bit, you are a bit uh, not happy and any sensible person should not be happy with debt so you you emphasized the fact that the debt the the, the tradition of indebtedness borrowing is still in this budget what may be the implication of that to the economy well i mean it's it's really very simple it just means that whatever revenue that the government is generating um 90 to 70 percent sorry 90 to 95 percent sometimes maybe even 100 percent will go to, to 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 pay off our debt service obligations we are maintaining that track even in this budget you know so so, uh, so how can we how can we develop if we are if we are spending all of our income paying uh, uh creditors and so that we then have to keep borrowing to get ourselves out of the <laughs> okay, Fa fantastic point, Shogun. Uh, but the natural question that will come to the mind of an average uh, person listening to the, you know, the well-made point is that what if the money that we are now paying back to our creditors, what if that money had been used for, for, uh, capital projects or provide infrastructure don't let me be speaking too much grammar provide infrastructure uh what would be wrong with that uh, or are you this disillusioned because you know perhaps that the sizable part of that money may have been used to just pay salaries which would be a which would be a disaster yeah, you know, that this point you make is exactly the problem, you know. Um, you look at this budget and you find that the capital expenditure component is just under 25%, if I'm not mistaken, because I've done the analysis. Um, the non-debt uh, recurrent component is about 60 to 70%. You know, this is huge. And what we're saying is that we're borrowing money all of the revenue that the government has is going to pay off the monies we are borrowing. Then we will now have to get a deficit funding to pay salaries and then to fund capital projects in a very small quantum that will not meet our requirements. You know, we have to do something different. I think the point here is that if the president had promised that he was going to, you know, have reforms, the starting point of these reforms will be our budgeting process. And yes, you might argue that, you know, he's, this is just 
less than one year into his tenure, maybe we will not be able to see some of those budget reforms now because really he has inherited the process. So we'll have to wait till 2020, the 2025 budget, which will be presented in 2024, before we can begin to judge him. Well, I can grant that. But I would think that there are some things that we can still see in this that will show some will and some political um, leadership in that direction. And of course, we shouldn't forget to mention all of the very extravagant and financially profligate provisions in both the national budget, the national assembly budget, across all the states, you know. All of these things are there and it's just showing us that nothing is changing. Okay, Shago, uh, let me quickly uh, jump over to uh, your colleague. Uh, Alistair, uh, your colleague is a bit uh, in the same, is wearing the same color of Jesse uh, intellectually and emotionally as you seem to be wearing. The gentleman too is not too enamored with the lack of innovation uh, in the in the budgeting uh, budgeting style or doctrine that's just been same of uh, as we used to say in those days the mushi, same of the shame. Uh, uh, and that uh, is not too uh, just like you. Uh, so, uh, uh, to an average Nigerian now, we must be speaking to solutions because you people, uh, you manage uh, portfolios of companies, and uh, I guess what families do, what companies do, uh, will be what nations also need to do to turn around. You know. Uh, uh, a, a misdirected sheep. Uh, Alistair, what are the ideas that people like you uh, and Shegu, starting with you now, Alistair, what are the ideas that you, you want to be seen on the table? You, are, you have made the point of reform of the civil service. Uh, it can be, they, they can't be playing at the same level of league. You want them to help their game, the civil service. But Shegu is also speaking about lack of uh, lack of vision. The, the budget to, does not seem to him to be uh, inspiring, inspirational. What are some of the ideas that you would well, like to uh, put on the table? Uh, well, uh, I mean, I, I, let me thank Shagul. I mean, didn't, you know, I'm, I'm sure he didn't hear me when I spoke. Uh, spoke. So exactly what he said. Like giving the president um, uh, so, some slack because uh, he didn't have a year, lots of time to do that budget reform. But if there is no budget reforms in terms of going back to the basics. Let us start from the zero big budgeting, which I'm sure President Balatinibu coming from the private sector, he has not forgotten how it is in the private sector, that nobody does things the same way and get a different, expect a different result. That is, that is insanity. Because if you really want to uh, carry out those bull reforms and return the amazing economy, work for everyone, then those bull reforms in terms of our budgeting principle must be and so, so I'm, I'm expecting my solution one, expecting a different budgeting approach for 2025 budget, which will be delivered in 2024. And it, the time is now to start. It is not all this kind of bad that I'm seeing on the on the on your screen now. All the governors, uh, ministers, Alistair, are all Alistair, don't be angry, don't be angry. I'm smiling. I'm smiling. I'm smiling. I'm smiling. But, but you, you are taking me. Uh, hello, Alistair. You have, you have actually yes, taken me. I was actually begging you, no, don't be angry. I can see, I can, I can see a man who is trying to be very no. polished in not being openly angry. But, uh, but no, Alistair, I'm not, I'm not angry. I'm, I'm not angry, but I'm I, I was really joking. I was joking. joking. You know, I was joking. But, 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 yeah, because most but people, let yeah. me make this most point, people, please. Yeah. Please let me make this okay. point so that you can attend to it. Alistair, the fact is that the man has a rich private sector background like you and Shegu Shokuton. But the irony now is that the ecosystem of where it's functioning now is, a, is, is an ecosystem that is subjected to bad tradition. The legislature, will, you know, the two chambers of National Assembly, they will still want their one run 80 million naira vehicles. They will still want to live as you know, they, they will still want uh, remunerations and perks that are far greater than what an average American senator gets. Uh, I, I hope I'm making a point. And coming into that kind of environment, 
Come into that environment, the kind of initiative you take in the private sector, you now, as an accountant uh, and a consultant, a business management consultant, you will look at somebody like me who is running a business and you tell me, Bola, the way you are running this business, you will run it aground if you don't do this, this, and this. But some characters in the legislature, they just don't want to hear that. Whatever may be your problem, let us have our cake now and eat it. Uh, 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 how is reform going to well, hold in that environment? Well, it's not the legislature. It's, it's the entire uh, the entire mindset of the entire country. Because it's not the legislature. Well, like, if your brother, if, 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 you're, if, you, if you go there and you want to be Boloba, and then you go back to Munshi and tell them grandma, they will abuse you. They will chase out of Munshi. They say, what do you bring for us? So, you see, it's, it's so, so even what is happening by them is exactly what the society is sometimes unwittingly put pressure on them to do and come back home with, don't come empty-handed. It's just like a civil servant who has worked for 35 years. He doesn't have a house. Where is he coming back to? The people will tell him, you are a fool. So in every budgetary process, he's looking for how to build the third, fourth, fifth, sixth house to, to secure his future Send the children abroad. Now, but I, I'm not saying it's hopeless. You see, leadership is everything. Remember when President Bola, when President uh, when President uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari came to power, the very first few three, three months they said this is a no nonsense man. And a lot of people shifted grounds and say, ah, let us see how it's going to be. It is when they discovered that the man was no longer the Buhari of 1984, and the man now has leeway. He just is not a father, no longer the Buhari. That we know in '84, everybody just begin to come back to business as usual, and you're hearing some of the worst corruption in the system. Look, if we don't tame corruption, and, and, and President Bola Metinibu knows it, he knows, he knows, he has been in the private sector, he's been in the public sector, he, he's been in the public sector. He ran Lagos State. He turned around what is happening, what happened in Lagos. Yes, it's not going to be a day, it's not going to be a year, it's not going to be six months, but it is now time to start setting the foundation. There was a post that was a person he did and reverse, which I was very angry with. Now, let me tell you the truth, but and I'm saying this the university system is one of the most corrupt institutions we have, one of the most corrupt that we have in this country. The university is so corrupt to the point that you just put keep putting in money, you're not seeing any output. So when that policy of 40% deduction from IGR of, of universities came to uh, was was pronounced, I was so happy about it. Because you leave so much money in the hands of these people. They will mismanage the money and they will keep blackmailing the government. The amount of money the government spends in the education is unprecedented. Yet, nothing. I repeat, nothing. Okay, now, let me go to... Lecturers will prepare... Uh, let, me let, me go to let, me let me just go to... Let me just go quickly. Lecturers will prepare to be lacatetical at the University of Lagos, University of Ibadan, and they'll be, they'll be doing part-time in other private universities and putting their best. The other one, they must be paid. Some, some discipline must come into the system. Without discipline, without discipline and leadership, we'll just be mounting budget at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it will become same of same. So there must be leadership, discipline, and the retuning of our mindset. It starts with okay, the Alisa, let, me go to your call, let, let me go to your colleague. I'm let sure that will we, we, we key in. Let me go to your uh, colleague. Shaku uh, Alistair is giving me the impression that this is a uh, share is tunics. And that the the job is yet to be effectively effectively done. Uh, same of the shame. Hello, Shagun. Yes, I'm with you. Uh, uh, I, I, I agree with Alistair. Um, um, I, I think that I think for me the, my overall reaction to this whole budget thing is that. Um, First of all, if you convert this budget to dollars, you know, you find that, as usual, we have not, there, there's no significant increase um, in, in the volume of the budget that we have. And statistics tell me that Nigeria has one of the lowest budget per capita in the world. Our budget per capita is lower than that of Ghana, is lower than that of almost all our uh, our neighbors in, in the West African coast is Shagun, far lower than South Africa, far lower than Egypt. Shagun, to collaborate yes. the point you are making, uh, citizen Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, before he became president, 
had also spoken to this very vital point that you're making. That exactly. Nigeria's budget, in fact, that Nigeria's budget, by the nature of its size, uh, diminishes the economic opportunities within the, within the economy. And that, you know, for somebody who had always spoken to a bigger budget to galvanize, to galvanize the economic growth, uh, I don't want to be the guest on this show. I'm as equally shocked that this budget is as, uh, is as Lilliputian as it has always, uh, maybe my opinion. Take it down from me, please. Exactly. So, so our, our budget now, this budget is roughly, if you go by the official exchange rate, of around 800 naira to the dollar. It's about $34 billion, which is about the range that we have operated since the Jonathan days. You know, so we cannot say we want to run a 1 trillion naira economy in seven to eight years and still be running the same budget. I had thought that the president will sit down. You know, he has had six months since he became president. And by the way, he has been running to be president for much longer than that. So, and he has known that he was going to be president since February, or is it March of this year? So, so you know, if we want to be honest with ourselves, he's had almost 10 months, you know? Can we have come up with a budget that would have at least doubled on the budget of last year? And can we have looked at how to cut the cost of governance radically whilst increasing revenues aggressively in a manner that because the citizens are seeing the cuts in cost of governance, the implication of the additional burden on them of the revenue increase for government would have been acceptable. Could we have tried that? Could we have seen governments going in, for example, for a revenue profile for the federal government alone of 15 trillion or maybe 20 trillion? Whilst by the time you aggregate those from the other states, you know, across the federation, maybe you add another 10 to 15 trillion, and we talk of a 40 trillion revenue budget, then maybe with a 20 trillion deficit, and you are talking of a total budget size of, let's say, 60, um, 60 trillion uh, naira, as against this uh, 27 trillion that we presented, you know, then we will know that we're serious. We will know that, oh my goodness, something has changed, something is shifting. We haven't seen anything like that, and, and honestly, that's just my own concern. I think that uh, the Shagun. president really needs to come back to, you know, um, doing the things that he was saying before he became president. Thank you very much. I, I, I really appreciate you. Uh, I guess in the last one week or there about, uh, we have had to to take, you know, quality time from you uh, for the enlightenment of our viewing public. <laughs> I really sure do appreciate you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you, uh, so much. Thank you for Alistair, I, I can't thank you enough, at least for also, uh, <laughs> when, when an accountant and an, and an economist agree, then something fundamentally needs to be done and done urgently. Because uh, the economy is exactly, but well, uh, you cannot, you are not, you are not far from it. It's something the, fundamental. Ah, and the, the economic sees the bigger picture. The the accountants looks at the nano, the nano figures, and yet the two of you are seeing anemia. You are seeing leanness. You are seeing urgent need for reform. You are seeing a need for a vision review that will be more inspiring. Uh, Alistair. Thank you. Uh, Alistair, thank you very much. We really appreciate you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Gbola. Uh, it, it, I'm, I'm grateful. I hope we will come back and discuss the state budget and river state budget. The state's budget, yeah. The states generally, to be honest with you, well, okay, maybe we pick one each from the geopolitical zone. Lagos in the southwest. Yes. Uh, yeah, you are right. I, I think it's about time we yeah, did river, that. Kanu, and then we we'll begin yes. to take it from there because they are, they are a major... The major, the major arm of development of the country, and we need to focus Speak on them to and begin to fantastic, let the know. wonderful, uh, wonderful, Alistair. I give, I give you my word on that. Thank you very much. Um, today's throwback. The little dictators at the back of the room are already.